Hi, my name's Lauren and I'm joined today by my colleague Beth and we are both schools and colleges engagement officers at Angela Ruskin University. Today we're going to talk you through the process of writing an effective personal statement to support your UCAS application. So where do we start? So many of you may already be aware, but if you're not, UCAS stands for Universities and Colleges Admission Service, and this is a service that you're going to use in order to apply for university. On your UCAS application, you can make up to five choices. In addition to that, you will write one personal statement which will support all of those choices that you make. You will also be asked to provide your predicted grades and to submit a reference alongside the application, which will allow universities to get a better understanding of what grades you are expected to achieve in August. This is an online process, so your application is all completed online and there is a one off payment of either £20 for one application or £26 for more than one application. Our advice really is even if you're 100% sure of the university that you are applying for, it's always better to have options. So paying the extra £6 to have an extra four choices is the better thing to do. It might be that you change your mind last minute or you attend an open day, which also change your mind. So having this option is preferable. So on the screen here, we've got our application to ARU slides. Now, this is just pointing out some really important key dates. So as you can see there, there are some dates on the 15th of October and the 15th of January. So these are actually the UCAS deadline dates. The 15th of October deadline is if you are applying for Cambridge or Oxford or any courses in medicine, dentistry, veterinary science. For all other undergraduate courses, the main deadline is the 15th of January at 6 p.m. So this is a date that you need to remember and a date that you need to put into your diaries. If you can submit your application before the 15th of January, please do so. This gives you a little bit more time to get other things into place and to get everything prepared for your journey to university. If it is that you are not entirely sure where you want to go for university, between the months of September and December, it's a really good opportunity to get yourselves out and about, visiting open days, finding out more information online, reading about course overviews. This is gonna give you a better understanding of what you want to study and where. So what is a personal statement? So according to UCAS, a personal statement is your opportunity to tell universities and colleges about your suitability for the course that you hope to study. You need to demonstrate your enthusiasm and commitment and above all, ensure that you stand out from the crowd. So I think what's really important to remember at this stage is that your personal statement is really the only thing that um, a university is going to have which you have written. So it's the only thing that an admissions officer or an academic who is reading that personal statement is going to have before they actually meet you. So it's really, really important that the statement is reflective of you and it includes lots of different skills and experiences that you have. So what are the basics? So as I said right at the beginning, you only have to write one personal statement. So if it is that you are still deciding on your courses, OK, that is something you really need to consider. For example, if you've got in your mind um, an idea of studying zoology and mental health nursing, it might be really difficult to be able to demonstrate your knowledge and enthusiasm for both of those courses within one personal statement. So it really is essential that you're absolutely certain of what it is you're applying for. The length of the personal statement is up to 4,000 characters long, which is 47 lines of text. And that does sound like quite a lot, but actually when you start writing, it's only one sheet of A4 paper. So the likelihood is you will probably spend more time chopping and changing things and editing to get everything that you need into that personal statement, as opposed to having lots of characters left over. What we recommend is you use either Microsoft Word or an alternative to write your personal statements. The reason that we say this is because the likelihood is you're going to write maybe 
two, three, even four drafts of this. You might do lots of editing and changing. So it's really important that you can you can do this with that document. In addition to that, they will also have features on there where you can count your characters and your words, as well as checking for any spelling or grammatical errors before you actually submit it. Once you are happy with the personal statement, you can then copy it into the UCAS apply button when it's finished. Really important at this stage that you remember to stay within that character count. If, for example, you submitted into UCAS apply a, a statement that was 4020 characters long, what will actually happen is that last 20 characters will be completely cut off. So you'd be essentially sending a statement that's not complete. So please do make sure you do stay within this maximum character count. And finally, this has to be your own work. Now that's for a couple of different reasons. One of them being that UCAS will use a sophisticated piece of software where your statement will be sent through. So if you have copied and pasted from anywhere or you've used um, a peers statement, then this will be picked up. So it's better to not submit work that's not your own. And in addition, from a university perspective, we want to know about you. We don't want to know about other people. So it's really important that this statement is unique to you and includes everything about your own personal experiences. OK, so what to include? So this is a really good way to get started with this statement. There are four questions here and all four need to be answered within your personal statement. So first of all, why do you want to study that course? So there are many different reasons why this might be. It might be that you need this degree in order to enter a certain type of job. So, for example, midwifery or nursing, you will require a degree to do this. It might be that you'd like a, a degree in a certain subject so that it enhances your opportunities in the future. Or it might just be that you have a passion for a certain area and you really wish to enhance this and you really wish to learn more about this. Whatever the option is, just please do include that within your personal statement. So keep asking yourselves that question why you want to study that course when you are applying. What do you know about the subject? So first of all, universities are not expecting you to be experts within the field. They're not expecting you to have read every book there was ever made about that subject. But what we are expecting is that you can demonstrate some knowledge and to tell us really that you've done your research on that area of study. OK, so if it is that you are applying for a course that you've not studied before, that's absolutely fine. But do some research around that, do some reading. If there's any specific theories around that topic or um, journals that you could read, that you could quote within your personal statement, this is a really good way to tell the reader that you have done your research. Goals and aspirations. So we're well aware that not everybody knows what they want to do after they finish their degree, and this is absolutely fine. But if you do have any idea of what you might want to do in the future, then please do include this. In addition, if it is that you just want to go to university to study a degree to sort of enhance your own personal skill set, so your own personal development, organisational skills, building independence, all of those kinds of things, that too can be included, which is absolutely fine to write about. And finally, why you? So why are you a suitable person for this course? What sets of skills do you have and what experiences do you have that make you suitable for the course that you're applying for? I'm now going to hand you over to my colleague Beth, who's going to talk you through our three sheet method, which will be about experiences and skills to help you write this statement. Thank you, Lauren. So for the next few slides, I will be taking you through this three sheet method. This is a method our team have come up with, which helps you break down the process of writing a personal statement. By preparing to write, this way you will ensure you include everything you need. So to start with, the first step of the method is sheet one, which is all about you. Have a think about the experiences you have which relate to the course or the courses you are applying for. 
Whether you prefer to visualise things or write lists, you can take notes or create a mind map, however you feel best to capture everything you need. The first part is your interests. Have a think about different activities you've done over the last few years. For example, you might have attended a course through your school or college which inspired you to do a certain subject at degree level. Generally, experiences within the last five years will be the most relevant, so try to elaborate on them the most. Older experiences are just helpful for you to get the ball rolling and to get you thinking about your skill set. Also, it doesn't matter how trivial some of your experiences are. For example, if you're a prefect in secondary school, you might not think this is relevant, but it could work for you if it demonstrates, for example, your leadership skills. Next up is any clubs or groups you belong to. You can elaborate on the skills you've learned from them later on, but just remember to relate them back to the course you're applying for. Your proudest achievement can be difficult to talk about. It's human nature to put ourselves down, but this is your opportunity to highlight the positive things you have achieved. You might have recently completed a Duke of Edinburgh award or passed your driving test. Whatever the achievement is, it's great to show your commitment and enthusiasm to improving your personal development. Now, work experience can be difficult to talk about, especially if you haven't got any yet. Think about voluntary work you might have done, or even if you've helped out family friends with tasks. We also advise that you use your summer to find some work experience, because this will really help when it comes to writing a personal statement. And finally, remember, the more relevant to your subject, the better. If, for example, you studied a science related subject at school or college and are planning on doing biomedical science at university, you could use school trips or practical experiments when you talk about your achievements. So again, just relate it to the course you are applying for. The next sheet is sheet two. This is when you can start putting together your experiences, skills and start applying them to the course. Universities will want to know what makes you an ideal student. This can be similar to applying for a job where you have both a role and person specification. These documents outline skills, talents and qualities that are needed for a particular job. For your personal statement, there are some generic things here to get you started but you have to consider that they might be dif differently weighted in terms of their importance. All of the words on the slide are good to add in as long as you can provide an example of when and how you have developed the skill. A way to find out more about the course is to attend open days and to ask tutors exactly what they're looking for. By doing this research, you will then find keywords key and skills to add to your personal statement. So what's next? Now you need to link everything together from sheet one and sheet two. The next three videos are examples of how to do this. So these videos here are just a simple and effective example of how to connect experiences to skills, including the tasks they did and why. So what to consider next? 
If you are applying for a nursing or midwifery course, it is really important that you know about the NHS constitution and you also need to be aware of what the NHS six C's are. All universities will be looking for you to evidence this in your personal statement. The six C's are care, compassion, competence, communication, courage and commitment. So make sure you spend some time familiarising yourself and developing an understanding so you can embed the information into your application. So on this slide, we have some common do's and don'ts when it comes to writing your personal statement. It is firstly vital that you show lots of enthusiasm and commitment to the course. It is, however, possible to be too enthusiastic. So be careful that you're not overdoing it. Next is to check your spelling and grammar. Consider your statement to be a professional document that you have spent time working on. Any spelling mistakes or grammatical errors can make your statement look rushed and it just shows that you haven't proofread. Another good tip is to use your own language. It's very easy to want to impress and people jump onto the thesaurus to change some words. Yes, it is perfectly okay to do this once in a while, but only if you understand what those words mean and they fit well within the sentence. Next is to take your time and to organise your statement into a logical structure. This makes sure that it makes sense to the reader. Sometimes the way that we, we write is different to others, so make sure you keep it simple and get your family and friends to go over it for you. Also, as we have already covered, you must back up all your claims with evidence. This means that any experience you've had, you must add in the skills and qualities you've learned from it. On the flip side, there are also some examples of things you should avoid at all costs. These include repeating yourself, which is actually very easy to do. This can happen if you're using the same words or the same experience to reference different skills. To avoid this, make sure you have several things you want to discuss written down and you need to make sure they all present you in a positive light. Secondly, you should never lie. It's not a great start and you will also get caught out if you're invited to an interview. Next, listing skills and not evidencing them. For example, it's very easy to say you're a good team player, but universities will want to know how, why and what experience you've had of being a team player. Cliches are very common to use. For example, people might say they have a passion for fashion. This is only OK if you're planning on going to do a fashion related course. These cliches should be avoided unless you can relate to them and the course you are applying for as well. It's also important not to be negative or funny. Some people might try to do this to make their personal statements stand out. But just remember, there is no guarantee the reader will have the same sense of humour. And so funny things can put, really put people off. Finally, make sure you don't mention any universities. The reason why we say this is because you might be applying for more than one. So you don't want to be mentioning names in a personal statement that will be sent to all of them. This next slide highlights some of the most common sentence starters. You can see the numbers at the end, which is how many times it has been featured over the last couple of years. The first one says, from a young age, I've always been interested in. This has been used a lot by students in their personal statements, and it's something that we really have to ask ourselves, is it true? Have you really dreamed of studying business management, for example, since you were a child? Try to think of different ways to be open and honest about yourself. At the bottom, we have also included a quote, which is another common thing people include, and they also try to start with it. If you do decide to use a quote, consider your character count firstly, and always think about the relevance it has to your course or you as an individual. We want to hear from you and not anyone else, so quotes won't necessarily enhance your personal statement. To summarise, I'm now going to hand over to Lauren, who's going to go through some sentence starters and sentence finishes. Thank you very much, Beth. 
So now that we've spoken about the basics of the personal statement and the three sheet method, which will allow you to get a better understanding of how to include your skills and experiences. I'm now just going to run through with you some basics about how you should start the personal statement and how you should end it. So first of all, what's really, really important is being very specific from the start. Now, the reason that we say this is because it's important that the reader, so whether that be a admissions officer or an academic, it's important that from the very beginning, they know exactly what you want to study and why you've decided to study that course. It's not uncommon for people to forget this little bit of information, but what you don't want to happen is for the person who's reading that personal statement for the first time to not know what you're applying for towards the end of that personal statement. So make it very, very clear right from the beginning within that first paragraph. This brings me on to the next point, aim to engage the reader. So if you are making it very clear from the beginning what you want to study and why, this will engage the reader. So they're going to want to know a little bit more about what experiences and what skills you have, which make you suitable for the course you are applying for. And finally, make it personal. So we've made references to this all throughout this presentation, but it's really, really important that this personal statement is all about you. It needs to be reflective of you as a person and unique as well. So what we don't want, we don't want to hear about your friends' personal statements or family members, but we want to know about you and only you. So make sure that there is a common theme running all throughout that personal statement where you are talking about your experiences and your skills. So finishing strong. You have obviously 4,000 characters in order to write this personal statement, but what you don't want to do is to get to the end of that personal statement and not have any characters left just to finish that personal statement, okay? So just make sure you've set aside some characters that you can write, quite a strong finishing sentence, basically. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big chunky paragraph, just make sure that you have summarised nicely and it links right back to the beginning of that personal statement. So on this slide here, we've got two um, finishing statements, OK? So first of all, I am looking forward to my time studying illustration. Secondly, I want to become a professional illustrator and I'm very determined to make the most of a degree course that will help me achieve my ambition. So the second sentence there is really clear, it's really concise. The person has identified to the reader what their ultimate goal is, which is to be a professional illustrator. And they've also dropped in there a couple of buzzwords as well, just to make that quite a strong finishing sentence. So they're very determined and they want to study for a degree course and it will help them achieve their ambition. OK, so just make sure that it links right back to the beginning and it just summarises the end of that personal statement. Have you finished? So what I would do at the end of writing your statement is to ask yourself the following questions, and this will give you an understanding really of, as to where you are with this, okay? So first of all, are your goals well articulated? So have you written in there everything that you need to include? So is there every experience that is relevant within that personal statement? So that comes back to that three sheet method and reading through all the notes you will have made in sheet one and sheet two. Secondly, have you explained why you want to study the course? So again, this is something we have spoken about already, but it is really essential. So is it clear why you like why you would like to study that course throughout that personal statement? Do you demonstrate knowledge about the course? So have you included relevant information that tells the reader that you've done your research, you know about the course, you've read about the course overviews and you've maybe done some further reading as well? So have you included that within your personal statement? Have you given the evidence for the relevant skills that make you stand out? So again, that comes right back to the three sheet method. Have you provided experiences that are related to skills? So have you demonstrated throughout that personal statement a set of skills that are suitable for that course in relation to the experiences that you already have? OK, so that's really, really important that all throughout that personal statement, 
it's very evident, okay? What we don't want to see, we don't want to see just lists of skills or lists of experiences. We want to see how these combine. So please do make sure that that is the process you're using throughout. And then finally, what personally for me is probably the most important things, does it read well and have you asked for feedback? So in terms of it reading well, this obviously is looking out for any grammatical errors, any spelling mistakes, making sure that there's a logical structure to it, making sure that you have um, made sure it's in the right paragraphs and the experiences and the skills are well linked. So that's one thing. And then secondly, have you asked for feedback? So what I wouldn't advise, I wouldn't advise you go and ask 20 people for feedback on your personal statements because this is going to be a little bit of overkill. OK, it's going to be too much, but it's not a bad idea to ask maybe a tutor at your sixth form or college and maybe a family member or friend who knows you quite well. The reason I say this is because it might be that you've forgotten something quite important about yourselves that your family member or friend can pick up on for you to include. In addition, when you do get somebody else to read over your personal statement, they're more likely to pick up on in, on any minor grammatical or spelling mistakes. OK, so it's really important that you have had it proofread and that it is the best it can possibly be before you do submit it. So do have a think about these questions before you do finally submit that with your UCAS application. If you do think that you've answered yes to all of those questions, the likelihood is you've got a very um, strong personal statement and it's ready to submit. But obviously there is no rush to submit it. You've got plenty of time to write this. And I'd really suggest that you do set some time aside within your schedules to make sure that you've got time to edit and change things if you need to. At ARU we're running lots of virtual events at the moment so if you haven't joined us already for an open day we have an open day coming up on Saturday the 17th of October and other dates throughout the academic year so please do keep an eye on our website at www.aru.ac.uk to find out more information. If you did have any questions for us following this statement talk today please email us at answers at aru.ac.uk you can contact us at our Twitter handle, Angela Ruskin. And again, for further information on any courses, accommodation, student finance, or anything about ARU, please visit our website, www.aru.ac.uk. Thank you very much for listening today, and we hope that you've enjoyed the personal statement talk.